Welcome back. Shares of NVIDIA turned around and are up slightly today, the second day of its hotly watched AI developers conference. Dear Trebosa joins us live from the conference for today's Tech Check. Hey, Dee. Hey, Leslie. So day one, it was all about Jensen's keynote. Day two, we're hearing from key players throughout the NVIDIA ecosystem, and there are many. If you look at the things that we do, uh, we build the chips, the systems, the networking, and so on and so forth, the entire, the entire data center practically, all the software that goes into it. And then we sell it in parts. The reason why we sell, and that is what confuses people. They think that NVIDIA is a chip company because we sell everything in parts. Right. The reason we do that is so that our customers could integrate NVIDIA's technology into their data centers however they like. So attendees here, they range from the buzziest Gen AI startups to the cloud hyperscalers to the academic pioneers of AI, really living up to its title as the Woodstock of AI. There's a panel tomorrow that was the brainchild of Jensen Huang himself that he will also moderate. It brings together key figures in the Gen AI space that co-authored a seminal academic paper years ago and then went on to found current darlings like Cohere and Character.ai. I just left a session with OpenAI COO Brad Lightcap on the future of AI. He ended it by saying that 10 years from now, if you hand a kid a laptop from our current era, he or she will try to talk at it. Kind of like how kids in the iPad era try to swipe on any screen that they see. So yes, the big announcement here of GTC is the efficiency and power of NVIDIA's Blackwell platform, but perhaps just as important are the startups and the companies and the individuals that are here that will be building and developing using it. That said, guys, everyone wants a piece of that NVIDIA halo, which has become so powerful. It makes sense to have a presence here at GTC. One essential ingredient that is very clear is the talent and getting the right researchers, engineers, data scientists. Some of these panels, they operate almost as recruiting tools. Guys, another reminder of how important that is today with that big move to Microsoft hiring a DeepMind co-founder as its head of AI. And I'm sure at this point in time, uh, there's probably nascent availability of people who are experts in this area because the technology itself is so nascent. Um, that's interesting that it serves as a kind of recruiting platform there. And also interesting, and it's the perfect kind of microcosm of just the flywheel effect that we're seeing from this AI uh, rising tide lifting all boats. How much discussion is there, though, about protections, uh, having in place a sense of uh, guardrails for this industry? Has that been a key topic at all? You know what? I would say this is more of a developer conference. While that is close to the top of many people's mind here, there was a little bit of that in the OpenAI session. They talked about building for the good of all humanity, which is, of course, the OpenAI mission. But it's kind of, this is very a technolo technologist conference, right? There's a lot of developers here that are just optimistic and eager to start building. I made the comparison to Apple's WWDC, right? When the App Store was becoming the behemoth and just this critical tool that it is now for developers, that's sort of what's happening here. You see um, developers and companies from all different industries just focus on what is going to be the killer application or hardware or whatever it is. But certainly in the background, there is sort of the ethical questions that many will have to confront and are confronting now.